Hi everybody, welcome to World Swamp. This is Fat Frog, and today I thought we'd talk about what settings I would use if you're starting out on Ark Survival Evolved, whether it be PC, Xbox, or now PS4. So let's get right to it, and let's go to Host Local. Now I've set everything back to the defaults to start out with. Now whether you're on PC or um, Xbox One or whatever, I think this front page should be the same now on xbox one and ps4 you should have more options and another in other settings to get you uh get you started but on pc at least um the, this is what uh that you are uh, able to use so first off we can switch to whatever map that we want if we bought the scorched earth dlc that's up there um i kind of recommend starting on the center map uh, excuse me the regular map the arc uh, versus the center on PC because the center takes up more resources. So if your PC isn't that great, I would uh, I would stick with that one. They're pretty good. The center is a little bit better looking and larger, and I think that's why it takes up more resources. Now the first thing I think that you really need to decide is okay, how much time are you going to be spending on this video game? So it's a survival game, and there's a lot of grinding. So if you want the true experience of Ark, I would crank the difficulty level up to one and then start your game hit play single player and then go from there but if you're gonna play this game for maybe a total of you know 50 60 hours um, which is kind of almost low for a survival game then you might want to think about doing other things or just to uh, you know give yourself uh, <laughs> uh, a fewer headaches in the game you're gonna want to adjust these levels so the difficulty level I believe the only thing that's going to change is um, the uh, high, the level that the uh, dino spawn in as. So on the regular old arc map here, if you have it cranked up to one, then you're going to have uh, up to level 120 dinos spawning in. So they're going to be harder to tame and they're going to be harder to kill and they're going to have more power and kill you and your tame dinos easier. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So if you were to go down to 0.5 or whatever, I think then the number is uh, the highest level is going to be 60. So half of 120 and that sort of thing. And zero, I'm not sure. They still have to spawn in as something. So to start out with, um, all these settings then can be changed each time that you start the game. So you don't have to worry about that you are completely stuck into doing this for the you know the rest of your character's you know career whatever you want to say on arc so okay so let's get to it um i would probably just let's just hit the reset to defaults i would probably at least go to half to start out with um to kind of give you a better experience now voice chat enable proximity chat if you're playing single player most of these things aren't important and then you can change these like I said if you want later on um, if you're gonna be playing with people allow flyer carry um, player versus environment I would do that uh, disable structure decay I would do that that's gonna make your life easier um, not hardcore mode uh, force no HUD no show map player location yes so when you pull out your map you're gonna show up where you are that's going to make your life easier. Um, Non-dedicated host tether distance. That's not going to be important for a single player. So max structures and range. I'd probably just leave that for now. Day cycle speed. Um, daytime speed. Nighttime speed. So nighttime can be really annoying. So I increase the nighttime speed so it doesn't last very long all the way. Dino damage I would leave as one. So if you set it down to zero, you're going to be um, being bit by a wild dino and never get hurt and then if you set it up here it's going to do a lot more damage to you now player damage you would think you'd want to set that as high as you can but if you start punching things barefisted you're going to do an incredible amount of damage to yourself and actually kill yourself pretty good or pretty easily um, when you're first starting out as so I would just leave that as one um, all the time structure damage I would leave that as one now, player resistance um, is uh, you know how how much damage you take um, when you fall or get bit by something so if you set it down to zero you're not going to take any damage if you set it up to here you're going to up to three you're going to take a lot of damage and uh, i would just leave that as one dino resistance same thing as player resistance i'd also leave that as one structure resistance um, 
I would leave that as one as well. Uh, the XP, XP multiplier. So that's simply for everything you do in Arc, whether it's you know collecting something or crafting something, you get XP for that. And so that's going to affect how fast you move up in a level, which is going to allow you to get more Ingram points and learn new things, uh, the ability to craft new things and whatever. Um, so I would set that up to three. Now, if you're not going to be playing Arc very much at all, then I would set it to higher. Now, you so you can on PC, uh, you can highlight that, highlight that, and then just enter in a value like ten. So I wouldn't do anything really ridiculous. I might just actually go to five, and then you can go back and change it and see if it's a little too cheaty for you or a little too hard. Now, taming speed, I would definitely crank that up all the way. Because something like a high level Bronto is going to take you literally 10 hours or more to tame at the uh, default settings of one, um, which is just completely ridiculous. I don't know how many people have, you know, time to babysit something for that long. It's very boring to do. Uh, you add a whole lot of chances where a T-Rex might come and eat your Bronto and yourself and stuff like that. So I would at least crank it up to three. Um, you may want to consider going higher eventually, although you're going to get to the point where you're insta-taming. And then that kind of almost takes something away um, from the game, actually. So I usually leave it at 3. Unless I'm taming something that's really crazy, um, I'll, I'll change it. So if I was out there and I wanted to tame a Bronto, I'd probably actually enter in 10 just for that particular game uh, for that day. So that's that. Okay, so harvest amount. Um, the higher that goes the more things you're going to collect so if you're just harvesting berries off of bushes um, you're going to collect more the higher you set it up again you can highlight that and crank it up now you don't want to crank it up too high because you'll become overburdened really quickly so at the very least though i would select cranking that up to three player character water drain um this can be kind of a problem i would set it to about 0.5 and also food drain just because um, you know you have to spend a lot of time worrying about your food and water and then with these settings you spend a little bit more time actually playing uh, different aspects of the game so now you got your dino character food drain I would crank that up to three because that will actually make taming go faster um, I did that in another video talked about how to increase taming speed um, I'll put a link to a playlist that I created of different sort of like how-to videos including this one um, player character player character stamina drain I just leave that as one uh, as well as dino player health recovery I usually turn that up to three um, dino character health recovery I leave that as one because that's going to affect I believe your tame dinos and also the um, wild dino so if a wild dino goes away it can regain health at a fast rate if you have that up there but you're going to want to at least set it to something so that your tame dinos do that um, do regain their health okay so harvest health is like how fast something um, gets harvested so if you're taking an axe against a tree um, at a harvest health of zero it's going to basically go down like in one hit if you have it cranked up to three you're going to be whacking on that tree for a long time before you get anything you actually get less so harvest health is actually going to uh, uh, low harvest health is actually going to give you um, more stuff and quicker so i would do that um, pve structure decay period i would set that to i just leave that as one resource respawn period i would collect that hit that up as three so if you knock down a tree at a high resource respawn period yeah at a high level it's going to no that's the other way isn't it i can't remember which way this goes now all right well the resource the anyway the purpose of the resource respawn period is that um so if you collect something in arc say if you pick up a rock or knock a tree down it's going to respawn and you can adjust this to affect how fast it'll respawn so like you can collect a metal node for instance and if you have it set right the resource will respawn like i don't know in a couple of minutes or something like that so you can actually really harvest a lot of stuff so that's kind of the settings as kind of how i would set them up and you like i said you can change these at any time you start up the game so don't feel too you know attached to it 
Um, worry if it's too cheaty, but don't be too cheaty because it will ruin the game for you. Um, and if you uh, play at these defaults and plan on only playing for 20, 30 hours of the game in total, that's going to ruin the game for you too because you're going to just be spending all this time trying to slave away and create resources and not try to, and try not to get killed by stuff. So take those things into consideration when you're doing it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this little kind of how-to video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to talk about how you know you set up your own game, you know, please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.